Hi there, buddy. I can tell that you're so excited to see me that you're this one. The energy is just, uh, I got no words for the energy. Nobody wants to sit in the front row. I guess it's because the desk was that. All right, man, so much to talk about, so little time. I hope everybody had a decent new year. How many of you are graduating this semester? I can go the distance. Who is taking 15 hours or more this semester? 16 or more? 17 or more? 18 or more? Good level. 19 or more? How many you take? 19? Ooh. My last year to get out of here, I did full summer 21 in the fall and 18 in the spring. So worth it. Little bites of the apple, little bites of the apple. All right, I am going to, I mean, we're gonna get in the syllabus and all that, but I'm gonna tell you straight up what I'm gonna do differently. Um, old dogs, new tricks, get off on one kind of stuff. You know, I'm always, um, uh, I always allow video, I mean, recording, you know, recording all extra, but um, just as a reminder, you know, with my dyslexia, and some of you have dyslexia as well, 20% of the population have, a, a, you know, somewhere on the dyslexic spectrum. I teach the way I do because that's how I'm made. That's how I, that's who I am and how I do it. Now, that being said, that may not be your best learning style. So what I'm really trying to do is learn how to fit. So I have information on my computer, I need to get it to your computer. And there's a lot of different adapters that I can use to try to plug in, okay? So one of the things I'm gonna be doing brand new this year is posting. So I had to borrow, because I don't have a lot of tech. So I borrow my 10 year old son's iPad. He doesn't need it right now, right? He's in school. And I'm gonna record every lecture. I mean, you may record also, but I'm going to post these on Google just to help with clarifications. I thought you said right, you said left. I might have meant to say left and I said right. You know, just clarification. And if, uh, just to make sure there's, we're all on the same page, okay? Uh, we'll see how that goes. Today's sign-up sheet is just to get, you guys are not a problem with, y'all used to the sign-up sheets, but um, I was going to wait to print out the ones with your names on it after a couple of days because the flux had a drop of and stuff, okay? Guys, this class is cool. I think it's cool. Um, how many of you, I'll give you a story, and, and this story isn't, um, this isn't soapbox stuff, this is just reality. It is common for these kind of miscommunications. It's common because a lot of people apply what we know in their regular lives. What I mean by that is if you're a lawyer, you can't practice law without not only a law degree, but there is a, a bar, a, a one organization that basically says you can practice law or not. Athletic training, which is my background, same thing. We have one organization that's responsible to say you can be an athletic trainer. Now, what I'm about to say isn't meant to step on any toes, I'm not seeing issues, I'm, I'm talking reality. Personal training and fitness, <laughs> there's, there's, there's Avogadro's number of, there's a lot of different ways to be calling yourself a personal trainer. And I'm not even talking about personal training, I'm saying people can just go be a fitness, uh, in other words, the application of human movement is universal. No one owns it. Everyone can apply it. But you can't do that in other fields. I'm not just going to go practice law. I'm not going to just represent myself in court and hire someone who's trained to do it. So what that leads to is it leads a lot of loose play on verbiage. It leads to a lot of what I call the bro science. Well, I heard you need to... And I heard from a friend you need to. 
And that leads us to things like generalization of muscles. Well, in this exercise, you're working your glutes and your quads and your hands and your Or if you really don't know what you're working, you just say core. One time, uh, a, a, a story about what I'm trying to get to here. Again, I'm not condemning you, but it is what it is. That you have a lot of misuse of verbiage because a lot of people are applying this stuff that haven't taken these classes because they don't need to take these classes. When I first started teaching, I got here in the fall of '06, and back then I used to pull out bad knees and. Um, I used to pull the reds to just not even, I can't even swim. Like, if I try to swim, I don't even move. I had to put on like a weight vest and like run in the water. And I, I don't, my wife says it's, I'm a freaking nature. I, I can't move when I'm trying to swim. Bless you. And there was a girl who was working the counter. She was about to take a test in here. And I went up to her and I said, oh, excuse me, ma'am. I was just messing with her. I said, can you tell me what muscles I'm working when I'm doing? You know, I think we were doing a test on the wrist muscles. You know, the answer is, you know, uh, extensor core five, right? Yeah, it's extensor uh, core five on that. That's the extensor digits, right? And before she was about to say, because she knew I was just kind of seeing if she had been studying, before she was about to say what specific muscles, this worker appeared like how you'd envision Batman to appear. Like he had a zip line, a puff of smoke. It was like magic. I was like David Copperfield, and he's like, sir, I uh, heard your question, and uh, the answer is the forearm muscles. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. Now I know. It's, again, this isn't, this is understanding that anybody can apply <laughs> these motion concepts, these muscle concepts, and with that comes a lot of confusion on verbiage. Right? I'll give you an example from 310, when we talked about ankles, right? Ankle sprains. And I'm like, look, that's okay because they don't know, but this is actually your self tailor joint, and your, the, the only ankle joint you have is this one. That's technically the ankle joint. They say you sprain the ankle because they don't know. They don't know something about transverse muscle joints. But you need to know. But what happens is, it's Pavlov, man. You ring the bell and you feed that dog, and what happens when you ring the bell is going to salivate. So you hear it your whole life ankle, 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 ankle. It's hard to let go of that verbiage because you're so used to it. Here's another one for pretend shoulder shrugs, right? Remember that one from 310? The infamous shoulder shrugs. You use it in layman's terms your whole life. It's hard to let go. To say that, well, my shoulder does this, 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 this. My shoulder doesn't dislocate and go up and down, right? So what I'm trying to preface is what we're going to be learning in here is say true. It's all a continuum of true is more, more accurate application of specific functions of muscles, firstly, and then the application of mechanics to biological systems, the biomechanics. Why is understanding specific muscles, functions, and role of your body important? In other words, why can't I just say core? Big deal. Something's working in there, huh? Cool. And the answer is indication and contradiction. In other words, there's going to be some times where some of you need to not work a specific muscle. You better know what it does so that you know what not to do. You, you can't just say core at a lot of your, your level. At, first of all, every one of your level. You need to know specifically which obliques are working with other obliques in the satchel, in the front and in the transverse. You know, it's not just about working a muscle. Sometimes you need to know when not to activate or work. So that means we have to specifically know functions of specific muscles. Injuries, right? Uh, catch-all term is real simple. Uh, I'll give you a catch-all term, shin splint. Uh, catch-all term. That just means something hurts. And that's okay for certain people, but at a higher level, like my athletic trainers, and for some of you, this, you gotta know what's working, <laughs> what's hurting. Is it periosteitis? Is it tenosynovitis? Is it, is it tendonitis? Or, you know, it, 
you got you got to you got to get more in depth. It's not just about the cliff notes. So that's what this class is going to be. We're going to piggyback on 310, where we learn how muscles work, the general function of muscles. They have rep muscles only pull, right? Remember that from 310. And we have as many groups of muscles. There is no skeletal muscle that works by itself. Skeletal, mm, heart, whatever, and those other types of muscles. Every muscle has some type of help. And I taught you this in 310. That's why we can't really say, we can't say. That's why I don't like people to in this class to say things like, I'm working my hamstrings. It's not that you're wrong, but there's other muscles that are working too. And if you never talk about them or think about it, you will go into the Pavlov mode of thinking your hamstrings are the only thing that's working. Does that make sense? If all you ever do is say the bicep, I'm working my bicep, then you etch that in your mind with the Pavlov and then you think it's the only part of the bicep that's doing that exercise. And I'm not saying it's not, but it's got to help. Okay? So what we're going to learn first, or we're going to do some review. You know, you don't, you don't go right back into any season just going right in. You have kind of preseason. You know, you, you practice for a while and you kind of re-educate yourself on the plays and you get yourself into shape and then you, you progress out. We don't have weeks to do this. We have Friday to do this, where I'm gonna review motions. Hey, remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this. We're gonna review the concept of muscles, innovation, what does it mean to have contraction above resting tone when a muscle's working is doing a job? And we figure out who's working by what job we need to, we need to have done. Concentric, eccentric, isometric. We're going to review the concepts of groups, where there's as many groups of muscles as there are joint motions. You got to have strings that pull in every direction of motion. And I'm also going to remind you why we don't associate muscles with motion. I'm going to you're going to be sick of me saying this, but that's how important it is. What I mean by that is verbiage. You may have heard that um, uh, the bicep, if someone says, what's the function of the bicep? And someone may say flexion. Or in a textbook, they may say flexion. And I'm gonna say, well, that's cool. What happens if you're just isometrically holding it there? <laughs> in other words, it's not moving. There's no motion. There's no flexion. But it's still doing a job. It's still working, right? So that's not proper verbiage. Because flexion, emotion, with a muscle is only accurate a third of the time. Two thirds of the other time, when that muscle is working, you're going to have no motion, or three centuries, you're going to have motion in the opposite direction. Yes? So I'm going to repeat it ad nauseum until we understand that we do not associate muscles with motion. We, are, we associate muscles with direction of pull. How do they pull? What direction do they pull? An elevator is called an elevator, not because it just brings you up. Guess what? An elevator can lower you down, and an elevator can keep you from falling down. But it pulls up, and that's why it's called an elevator, because that cable, regardless of making you go up, keeping you up, or letting you down, pulls up. Same thing with muscles. Why is a hip flexor called a hip flexor? Not because it just flexes your hip. I can have hip flexion because of extensions. It's about the direction of pull. In fact, ironically enough, when you pull muscles or pull tendons or have ruptures, the motion is actually in the opposite direction. That's, that's how you pull things apart, is that they're pulling one way and it goes the other way. That's my irony for you. That the motion that actually strains these things is not the motion that <laughs> it's pulling it. It's such an important concept to learn that I'm going to just be repeating it over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to pull in, I did this in 310, and I'm going to do it here. I'm going to pull in some textbooks that use late, fast, and loose verbiage. And all I'm going to do is add a simple term. It's going to be super simple. 
Hey guys, look at it says bicep, its function is flexion. All I'm gonna ask you to do is that add one word to it. Flexion puller. Meaning that it pulls in the direction of flexion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that muscle is gonna always cause flexion. Sometimes it's gonna be pulling and have no motion, right? But I expect it. And sometimes it's gonna be pulling and working and slowing down motion in the other direction or letting it go in the other direction. Flexion puller, extension puller, internal rotation puller. So I'm hoping that that's a good bridge for some of you, for some of you that have had that powerful law of verbiage etched into your mind. We're gonna make it work. It may take a little effort and we may have to kind of reprogram the brain, but this is ultimately why this is important is because my, I, just another example, Dr. Jeff, uh, Coach Jeff Davis, a good friend of mine, passed away a couple years ago. He's my basketball coach. And it took me 30 minutes. Now this guy has been in the game for a long time. Physical education major, has his master's degree. And it took me 30 minutes to explain to him why a push-up doesn't work your front and your back muscles. And his logic was pretty sound. He's from Chicago. He's like, oh, Brian, I understand when I'm pushing myself up, but when I'm lowering myself down, that's like a row motion. Think about that for a second. When I lower myself down, that's like a row motion. He's not wrong. But the problem is, is that he's associating muscles with motion. When I see a row motion, it must be <laughs> back up. Oh, it's the same muscles. The ones that made you come up let you go down. Same external force. So that's why this is important to me. Because it's easy to see motion and just that Pavlov, man, that bell rings and you want to sound it. You see motion and oh, that's flexion. Must be hip by hip flex. And I'm not saying it can't be, but it doesn't have to be. That hip flexion could be because of other muscles. That hip flexion could be because of nothing. Watch, I give, I give you an example of shoulder extension with no muscle involved. <laughs> Just because you saw extension doesn't mean my lap caused it, right? We, we, we can't do that. So this is the class where we're gonna get into specific muscles and function. In other words, so what? Okay, so what? Hip flexors, a group of muscles that pull the university. Who are they? Who's on the team? The 95 Bulls, that's cool. They won championships. Who was on that team? Who are the good players? Who are the important players? Who are the role players? You see the analogy here? Muscle groups are teams. And not all teams have to be big. Some of them are big, but, but you can have a team like, um, say, in volleyball, right? A team of two, and it's a team. So sometimes they're small teams, sometimes they're big teams. But the reason why we have to know everybody on the team is because as many different muscles that you have, that's as many different problems you can have. So we have to know these functions of all these muscles. Okay? All right. Let me hop off my soapbox get into how to get you guys done with this class. Three tip. Now there's an equivalency here, guys. So there's a, a physics 207 or physics maybe 215, maybe someone help me out. What's the, the other physics that has trigonometry in it? 205. So basically I need you to have some trig because some of the stuff we're going to do with vectors has trig in it. And in the past, I was having a tough time. What in the path, it's all about consistency. Majority of all the students I already had, had physics. But there was one group of students that didn't have to take physics. They could take, you know, something else. And the problem was is that when we got into the trig stuff for this class, the students that didn't have it were totally behind. And that wasn't fair to the other students who were like, dude, let's go. <laughs> so we put in the physics as a prereq so that everybody could be on the same page when we get into the, the, the vector stuff, okay? So that's all that is. That's just making sure that when we get to the part that has this stuff, that everybody can play.
That's all it was. Okay. In fact, it wasn't even that group of students that made this. And again, it wasn't their fault. It was actually an exercise science student that made this change because they were like, well, I've never had physics yet. And I was like, it's in your degree. They're like, yeah, but it's not a prereq, right? so I was going to take it in the last, <laughs> last semester. And I was like, oh my God, we got to do something. Okay. Yay, loopholes. Three cheers for loopholes. Guys, just a reminder it's almost Mardi Gras season. That means they're going to barricade up stuff and they're going to limit road exposure. So just, just say it. Plan accordingly. You've had me last, or you've had me before. You know how I feel about that kind of stuff. Um, we know, we actually know our final. Uh, it's Tuesday. Tuesday during finals week. I actually have it on my syllabus. I'm so proud of myself. I'm trying to stay ahead. All right, cross-sectional anatomy workbook. Uh, again, guys, this is just a reminder about the workbooks. I make zero pennies off of this. This is something that is done through the department to get you information so that you don't have to be there writing down every word I say. Um, uh, so it's basically for you to have the key stuff, and then on the other side you have notes where you can write. But but that's an important thing. In other words, if you have, if if the book's out or you're looking for it, that's Mr. Chris. I, I, I don't even deal with the bookstore. Okay, so anything with that, go past Mr. Chris. Uh, I say, I used to say your 310 book can be handy if you still have it. If you don't, you know, go use it. But just, we're going to be referring to a lot of, I mean, when we talk about these specific muscles, it's all about pulling in directions of motion and the analogies that we use and muscle function and stuff. So um, it's really, it can be useful. I am switching up my grading scale this semester. This class is going to be an easy C. If, if you try, if you want to. But it's going to be a more difficult B, and it's going to be an easier, I mean, it's going to be an even more difficult A. So I'm protecting the integrity of the A's and B's while at the same time trying to help students get the heck out of here. I think that's a fair trade-off. So yeah, my grading scale is uh, it's called modified Delcom. So let's take a look at it. 90 to 100 is an A. 78 to 89, just a little bit of bump, a little bit of extra. And then for the C, I give you a little bit more, 65. In addition, I'm going to continue what I did last semester, but I modified it a little bit. Okay, so you have four tests, three tests. You have three during the semester, then you're fine. You're fine for the same, okay? Just like last semester, and look, if you didn't take me last semester, if you didn't, maybe it's been a while, I, I went to a new philosophy of rewarding people who come to class. I'm not going to take away if you don't come to class, but I'm not going to help you if you don't come to class. And how this works is, is that you get four absences. It was five, that was too many. You learned, you adapt. Four. Now, that's excused or unexcused. I don't care. Well, I care, but my point is, is that these are meant to be held for an emergency. Not like, oh, I got one, I got one, I got one. Then next thing you know, you use them all, and then a real emergency happens, right? These are like lifelines. These are when you are sick, or you do have a family emergency. Now, obviously, there's exceptions. When you know your schedule, baseball, softball, I have a, a we're going to be at a, a conference, pre-existing conditions, <laughs> right? I'll work with you. Again, listen to the intent. The intent is try to help people that come to class, not hurt people that don't. That's not what this is about. This is about me trying, this is me understanding that the more you're here to listen and the better availability you have after class to come clarify some things, the better you grades me. So I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, it's like curfew, right? Why, why do they give it to you when you grow up? Because they love you. So come to class, and I'll reward it. And if you don't come to class, I'm not gonna 
I'm not going to hurt you. You're just not going to get your lowest grade job. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Oh, and also, this actually kind of is cool because if you make, let's say you make A's on your first three tests, then you don't have to take the cumulative final because one, it's double jeopardy, it's the same information, and two, that's the grade you would drop. Does that make sense? So that's kind of a good motivation uh, to, to come to class and do the best you can on the first few tests because that's less time you got to worry about this stuff and more time you can worry about this stuff. Class attendance. So now I don't look at it as absent. I really just look at it as missed class. That's the way I kind of view it. And a missed class is, is just not being here at 8.30 when we get started. You know? In other words, being late, that's a missed class. Uh, so at 8.30, I'm going to pick up the roll sheets, and I'm no longer going to allow people to listen outside, come in, because that was getting ridiculous, because people would show up at Eight at nine fifteen, and then come in and sign the roll sheet. I just got tired of that. I can't please it. So, um, so uh, now that being said, just because you miss, you should still have the availability to get the lecture, and that's why I'm doing this. Hey, Brandon, my son's like that. That's why I'm doing this because again, I still want you to have the information. I want you to be here, and I want you to be here on time. So you still can be able to get it. And, and like you, you know from 310, man, you can record. And I encourage you to record, because maybe one day I went to record and I didn't press the button, or, but you know what I mean, accidents happen, right? So it's always good to be redundant and make sure you have it. David Pumpkins, any questions? Uh, the reason I use the sound system, twofold, one it saves my voice, uh, sometimes I deal with chronic laryngitis, and two, sometimes people have a tough time hearing me in this, in this big room. So, um, so, doubly, doubly useful. All right, so I think of attendance, I kind of thought of this analogy, when we were in elementary school, maybe not high school, maybe two, but you, you got these little certificates for perfect attendance, right? And perfect attendance, meant you went to school every day without missing a day, and that included <laughs> sick, right? If you were sick, you can't be like, uh, I want to get it, still get perfect attendance, here's my doctor's excuse. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get perfect attendance when you're sick. So again, guys, I just want to reiterate, those four need to be held for emergencies. They need to be held on to when you're sick. They need to be held on to. Don't blow through them for no reason, and then all of a sudden, oh, but this time I'm really sick. We're cool? Everybody understand? I just really want you here, guys. I miss you. I want you here. All right. Um, one exception to being late, I'm going to let you be late for an exam because I'm not that evil. Um, so my point is, is that if you're running late for whatever reason, still come, <laughs> still come to class. Um, I mean, obviously there is a unrealistic deadline and that is nine o'clock. What I mean by that is <clears throat> from now on, when we start a test, I'm gonna hold everybody in place until nine o'clock. Even if you're finished, just convert oxygen into carbon dioxide or, or look over your test. And what that's going to do is a couple things. That's going to save Mr. Chris from doing, you know, a thousand tricks back and forth. In other words, if I say, okay, guys, 9 o'clock, if you're done, I'm turning. Okay. And that gives people a chance who are a little late to come in because if someone leaves class, I can't let you come in and take a test. I, mean, that's, I, I can't police um, that information didn't get out, okay? So does everybody understand how that's going to work? So if you're late for a test, they still come. Now, you're going to still get this, not the relative amount of time. In other words, at 8, 9, 20. You can, so in other words, you have less time to take the test, but hey, that's better than nothing. I have a policy for missed tests for an emergency. And that is, <clears throat> whether you're sick or not, 
your alarm should have been set for you to come to class tomorrow. So if you do not communicate that you're going to be missing the test for a valid reason, that's not following the policy. And there, there is no make. In other words, if I get an email at 11 o'clock, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm sick. I was, I'd be like, probably slept in. <laughs> because my point is, is that you're going to be up to come to class anyway, whether you're sick or not. So just communicate with it. That's all I'm asking you to do, is just be communicate. Just like if you were going to be working a big boy, big girl job, and you were sick, you would communicate that you're not coming in at the time you're expected to come in. You know, it's the same thing. Okay? All I'm asking for is a little communication. Email or phone, you can leave a voice message with Mr. Chris or email me here. Okay, there's your fine. We got this Tuesday, May 5th at 10.30. So don't, 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 don't put me in this situation. Oh, man. We think we planned a family trip or we planned a planned vacation or we planned this. Don't, 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 don't. And listen, you may not need it, right? If you do well on the first three tests, and you, you don't have to take the final if you've earned it. But... Do not put me in a position where I won't be here for the final. Can I take it early? Can I take it? I don't like that at all. Obvious exceptions, we're going to be on the road for a game, whatever, and we can work that out beforehand. Okay. University reasons. Guys, if you have paperwork to take your exam, uh, bring it to me and we'll work it out, man. I'm going to accommodate you any way that I can. Let's see, go ahead. you to um, say review, just get back into the, you know, <clears throat> get back into the game a little bit. Motions, right? Re, um, uh, review your motions and key things such as this is an ample, this is not, so Taylor stuff, inversion, inversion, ankle planner, girl side, knee flex, knee side. All the motions, pelvic girl rotations, scapula stuff. And then, in addition, it would behoove you to review <clears throat> muscle concepts, muscles only pull. What do we consider contraction? Contraction is a tricky word because Pavlov, it's, it's insinuating that it's shortening. But just like flexors, extensors, directional pull, contraction doesn't mean shortening. It means trying <laughs> to shorten. I know that's semantical, but it's ridiculously important. And that's why, what word did I use in place of contraction on the regular? As a W word. Do a job. When you do a job, you work. Concentric work, eccentric work, isometric work. Doing a job, shortening while trying to shorten, being lengthened while trying to shorten. No change in motion while trying to short, trying to shorten is what contraction means. Okay. So review that, those options when muscles are working, and then review the concepts of flexors, extensors, internal rotators, external. What does that really mean? It means muscles that pull in those directions. <clears throat> Not necessarily muscles that are causing those motions. That's very important. We do not associate muscles with motion, because we can't, because two-thirds of the time we'd be wrong. I think that's the part that I'm trying to emphasize now to my new classes, is so what if I tell you you shouldn't? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> you know? But then why can't I juggle it in the eyes? So if I tell you don't associate muscles with motion, I should follow up with why you shouldn't. And the reason you shouldn't is because you're only going to be right a third of the time. That's it. Any 
think about it, you're doing curls. Flexion, bicep, yeah, but what happens when you lower it down? Still a bicep, and it's still a flexor, but you have extension. And there's a lot of people, bless their little hearts, they don't know, and it's not their fault. There's some people that think bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, it's true, because they see extension, and they say, well, what's the function of the tricep? Extension. That's how they see it in the textbooks. Or that's how they hear it in the gym. Does everybody understand why that's, why I, you know, I'm not making things up, man. It is what it is. Okay. And again, you can still hold on to that verbiage, bicep flexion puller. But a flexion puller can still be responsible for extension while pulling in the direction of flexion. Flexion puller, extension puller, internal rotation puller, left lateral puller. And then what's going to come next after we kind of dust, get the rust off, then we're going to get into this concept of cross sectional anatomy where I'm going to teach you guys how to view muscle function as a picture, not as a memorization list. <clears throat> Although I don't care, I just want right answers. But think about this. If this was a classroom, a circular classroom. Now, keep in mind, we did this in 310 too, where I explained to you that how you study on your desk is going to be different how I have to lay it up on the screen, right? I have to rotate the book up so that everybody can see it. So this circle, this cross section, isn't happening in your body here, it's happening in your body there. In other words, your ankle and subtalar joint is somewhat circular, your knee is somewhat circular, your hip is somewhat circular, your waist is somewhat circular, mine's a little bit more circular than others, but it's still somewhat circular. Your neck is somewhat circular, your wrist is somewhat circular, everything's semi-circular, somewhat circular. If I asked you to name as many people as you can in your second grade class, odds are you're not just gonna start dropping it from alphabetical list in your bureau. Odds are you're gonna say, well, let me picture myself in my class, and who sat in front of me? Who sat behind me? Who sat to the left of me? Who sat to the right? Does that make sense? Spatial relationship. So that's how I'm going to teach you about specific muscles. I'm going to say, hey, this is a wrist joint, and the wrist joint is somewhat circular. And you're going to have muscles that sit in the front of class, and they pull in a certain direction. You've got muscles that sit in the back of class, and they pull in a certain direction. You've got muscles that sit more on the outside of class, and they pull in this. So it's all going to be understanding how muscles sit in class. And based on how they sit, it's going to give you their direction of pull. Meaning that a hip flexor makes sense that it crosses the hip in the front, right? It's going to sit in the front of the hip class. And your butt is going to sit in the back of class. And if it sits in the back of class, it's going to pull towards the back. If it sits in the front of class, it's pull towards the front. Lateral crossing muscles are going to pull lateral. Medial crossing muscles are going to pull medial. I mean, it really is kind of simple. But it's going to be a great tool for function. It's going to be a great tool for function. Okay. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do, because I find this works better, is I'm going to be I'm going to be planting seeds of mechanics while we're doing these things. What I mean by that is instead of just saying today's lecture is going to be about levers. I'm going to say, hey, let's look at this muscle right here. And you notice that it kind of has a, a certain advantage that maybe another muscle that's over there may not have. In other words, I'm going to just plant seeds of mechanics while we go over these muscles. And then when we get into the specific mechanics, it'll make it a lot easier to digest. Because I'm going to be like, hey, think of it like the brachial radialis or <laughs> the elbow. Remember the brachial radialis? And look how it does. It have an advantage of this and this. 
So I find that when we get into levers and pulleys and the mechanical parts, by giving you these specific muscles and kind of talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages, uh, you know, casually, it helps for the understanding when we get into it professionally. Okay? Any questions? We're cool?